have already done one Liam Neeson movie on here before, and I am always 100% down to do another one. I will never turn down a Liam Neeson movie to see in theaters either, except maybe Taken 3. <laughs> But sadly, I still saw that in theaters. You know, it actually wasn't as bad as I thought it would be, but it was still pretty bad. Anyways, let's get to the point. Hey guys, thanks so much for watching Johnny June Movie Reviews. I'm JJ, and let's get started, shall we? I'm the only one ever cared about you. And all of that ended an hour ago when you killed my son. I pulled the trigger. I killed Abby. Our story takes place in New York City, much like most action crime movies do, where we find ourselves in the middle of a story of a mobster whose lifetime friend happens to also be his boss. He's lived a lifetime full of murder, which has led to the estranged relationship he has with his son. However, even being the bad father that he was in the past, this man still sees his son as his son. He loves him. So when his son accidentally witnesses his boss's son commit a murder, the boss's son tries to kill our main character's son in order to keep him quiet, therefore leading our main character to kill his boss's son in order to defend his own son. Now with the corrupt cops involved in this murder, the main character and his son are on the run all night long because now they are the most wanted men in the city, having been blamed for the murders that the boss's son committed. Sean's gonna come after you, Michael. And if he can't get to you, he's gonna go after your family. This has gotta end tonight. Tell everyone to get ready. Jimmy's coming. Lee Mason is our main character here, as you guys may have guessed, otherwise known in the movie as Jimmy. You may have seen him in the movie I did a review on non-stop, or his most well-known movie, Taken. Even though Liam Neeson typically plays a man with a particular set of skills, I am never bored with his acting abilities. He has a swell job portraying Jimmy, who is a man full of regret, with a long past of being a murderer to innocent men just in order to keep his boss happy. However, even with his corrupt past, Jimmy is fully committed to keeping his son safe. With that being said, we have the son Michael, or Mike, who is played by Joel Kinnaman. He is best known for his leading role in the latest reboot that came out in 2014 of Robocop. Even though that movie was kind of bland, I did grow to like that actor because of his acting abilities that he showed me in that movie, and he didn't disappoint in this one. This guy definitely did a great job showing his emotions that he had towards his father in the movie, which was just pure resentment. Also, I should add that Mike is a husband and a father to two little girls who he will also do anything to protect just like his father. Then we have the well-known Ed Harris. He's been around for a while, but if you don't know who he is, he's been in movies such as Apollo 13 or A Beautiful Mind. He plays the mobster boss Sean. Although he dearly cares for his old friend Jimmy, he completely resents the fact that he killed his son, and he wants Jimmy to feel what it's like to live in a world without his own son. Which honestly baffles me just a little, considering who Sean's son is. His name is Danny, played by Boyd Holbrook, who was a complete little jerk. He plays a typical spoiled little mobster boss's son who does whatever he wants. I did recognize this actor from being in the movie A Walk Amongst the Tombstones, which is also a Liam Neeson movie, and that came out last year. Next we have the cop, who, in like so many other movies, is the good cop who has been working for so many years in order to prove a man guilty that he's been chasing down. The actor who plays this cop's name is Vincent D. Onvorio, and I also recognize this actor from the movie The Judge, which also came out in 2014. Lastly, we have our train killer Price, who is played by Come On? Common? I don't know, but I looked him up and he didn't have a last name according to the internet, so. But he is best known as his roles such as the one in Wanted. He, like Liam Neeson, is also playing in a role that he usually plays in, which is a trained killer. You must go and I must buy. You've got to worry about staying alive. I'm the best chance you've got. Listen to your father for one night. One night. So the effects. They were normal. Gunshots looked normal. However, there were certain parts where they were showed transitions from one character to another with one fluid motion of the camera from our point of view. I wasn't too crazy about that because it kind of gave me the feeling of a low budget movie. However, I did like the originality of it and how it kind of gave you a perspective of how big New York City is and how close these characters could be to each other. Let's 
let's bring this all together. We had some very big actors in this movie that were very, very well cast. It was a very original idea because I've never seen a movie that had quite this plot. I really enjoyed the ending, which I won't tell you guys because in these reviews, I never ever give any spoilers away. And plus, I always like the movies where one man goes up against all the bad guys and they don't really anticipate him coming because they don't expect him to. He's only one man. Everyone who knows Liam Neeson knows he's really good for that role. So to put these few points together, I give this movie a 7.7 .7 out of 10, which falls under the rating of good and very good. I was very much entertained by this movie and never found there to be a dull moment. It definitely is a movie you would want to spend your money on in theaters. Anyways, that's about it, you guys. I hope you enjoyed watching, and I hope some of that was informational for you on whether you wanted to go spend the money to see it in theaters or not. If you are interested in my rating system, just scroll down. It will be in the description box. And if you so desire, leave me some comments and tell me what you guys thought of this movie. I always enjoy conversations about that with you guys. Don't forget to subscribe, and see you guys next Friday for the next movie review.